So a couple of days ago I posted this spinning triangle on reddit and quite a few people asked for a tutorial and I thought, why not? But before I start, I do want to say that I do not consider myself a blender professional and some of the ways I make stuff might not be the best way of making it. I also recommend you do Blender Guru's donut tutorial first so they have the basic grips with Blender so as this isn't the most beginner friendly tutorial. <sighs> Voiceovers are harder than I thought. To start off, delete the default cube and add a cone with only three sides. When you first add the shape, a little menu in the bottom left should open allowing you to change that. Tab into edit mode to move the top point down and then tab out to move the whole shape flat with the horizon. Give the shape a wireframe modifier with a thickness that you think looks good. Now you don't actually have to use a triangle, you can use any shape with any amount of faces, just remember the more faces, the harder it's going to get. This is my alternative favourite, but it does require the boundaries checkbox to be checked in the wireframe modifier. Next, let's add the background. Add a circle with a multiple of the amount of sides your shape has, or too many to be seen. In this case I've gone with 6. This is just so the background can be easily loopable. In edit mode, enlarge the face, press F to make it a face, extrude it up and remove the top face. Still in edit mode, select the bottom face and using the bevel tool, curve the corners to make them smoother. You can use the scroll wheel to add more detail. In the top left, click object and shade smooth. Then don't forget to save your work because then you might lose it. Yeah. Add an empty to the center of your scene and align the camera alongside it. Using control P, parent the camera to the empty, meaning now the empty controls how the camera rotates. As we are now using the camera, we might as well set it up. I was using a thousand by a thousand at 30 FPS, but any resolution, frame rate, or field of view should work. What is important is to enable cycles, GPU compute if you can, set your color to RGBA so that we have an alpha channel, and make sure transparency is enabled under the film section. By controlling the rotation and scale of the interior empty, you can change how the camera sees the triangle. For the next step, I recommend you change the rotation Z value of the empty to zero. Now we need to add lighting and colour to the scene. To add lighting, I add a square to which I add two array modifiers to make an 8x8 grid. Make sure to align it centrally above the triangle. I then apply an emission texture, however an area lamp will work just as well if not better. Make sure you parent this to the empty. For a bit of extra lighting, I added a spotlight on the side. You can put in as many extra lights as you want, but try not to have them behind the triangle. Also remember to parent them all to the empty. To make the scene a little nicer, add some colour and maybe change the parameters of the material. I've gone with a very light pink for mine. I gave the triangle a metallic texture and reduced the roughness to give it some more reflections. Now it's time to do the animation. I want each section to take about 4 seconds and at 30 fps that would be 120 frames. You also need to add around 40 frames on either side, making the total amount of frames 200 for this animation. This works out perfectly as for every frame, the empty rotates 1 degree. Go to frame 40 and set the rotation to negative 60, and then go to frame 160 and set the rotation to positive 60. Now it should appear that the triangle is rotating. If it seems to be moving faster and slower, we'll fix that in a later step. Now go to frame 0 and set the rotation to negative 100, and then to frame 200 and set the rotation to positive 100. Next, open the animation workspace and change the dope sheet to graph editor. You can change the scale of this using the little dots on the scroll bars. You can also hide the x and y axis on the left side. This step is optional, as this is when you can choose if you want the animation to slow down when head on with the triangle. It is really important however that these areas stay as straight as possible. This is because as one of the animations appears, the other one will disappear and we want them to be moving at the same speed. I went with something like this, but it's not essential. Next, go back to the layout work area, duplicate the triangle and remove its wireframe modifier. Then change its material from the metal material to a holdout texture. This creates a cutout area in the frame and is why transparency needs to be enabled in film, otherwise the cutout will be black. Create an output folder and set as the output for the render. For the template we only need to render out frames 40 to 160, so set the start and end accordingly. To render just go to the top left and under the render tab click render animation. To save time I rendered everything at 25 samples and used the denoiser in the compositing. Reddit user the broke monkey suggested I use neat video denoiser and I'm gonna have a look at that. Thin Soldier also recommended that I use the open image denoiser instead of the compositing denoiser, but for me that would increase my render times almost three times as much. You should now have a template video with a cutout where we will add the scenes. Save the file under a new name so we don't lose our old one. 
delete the inside holdout triangle. We now need to increase the amount of rendered frames as some of the frames will be visible after the animation has repeated. Set the start and the end to just when the faces are going out of view. For me, that ended up being 8 and 192. Again, duplicate the triangle and remove its wireframe modifier. Go into edit mode and delete its furthest vertice. Then, select the whole shape, press E and S to extrude out the entire shape. Without selecting anything else, click X and then delete the faces to remove the face that was created on the back. Make sure that when the camera is in its most left and right position, it is not overlapping with this border. You can fix this by selecting the outer vertices and dragging them away on the Y axis. Finally, delete the inner face and give this object the holdout texture. You should be left with this interesting looking frame, and for me I had to re-enable the original triangle. You are now ready to put anything you want inside this triangle, so let me show you some stuff that I put inside the triangle. Using the same trick of duplicating the triangle and removing its wireframe modifier and then removing a couple of vertices, I created these mirrors on the edges of the triangle. There is a Blender add-on called Blender Kit that allows you to access textures and online models right inside of Blender. Using it I created a little scene with rocks and a tree. I added a small spotlight above the tree with a very warm light to act as the sun. This add-on is free so have a look. The galaxy was created out of three parts. These simulated particles and its node tree. This smoke simulation which I used the particles for. And this inner disk and its node tree. The reason I'm not making a tutorial about the galaxy itself is because I had a massive problem with turning all the particles into one single object. The combination of smoke and particles also kept crashing my computer a lot, and denoiser also doesn't work properly with the galaxy because of how speckled it is, so it would have taken a lot longer to render. Once you have rendered out the template and all the scenes that you want, open a new Blender file and go to video editing. Press on add and then image sequence and find your template that you created. Select all the images and click add image strip. Make sure you set this new Blender file to the same resolution and frame rate. Copy and paste this template for as many scenes as you have. I have three scenes so I've copied and pasted it three times. Open the timeline in the top left hand corner. Since the template is 121 frames long and there's three of the scenes, extend the workplace to 362 frames as frame 0 also counts as a frame. Check to see that the animation loops properly. Now add in your first scene. Move the playhead to the start and then move the video around so it lines up with the first triangle in the video. Now add your second scene and move it so it fits into the triangle that is visible in the first scene. Now move the playhead to where the next scene is visible and add the third scene into that slot in the same way. For the next triangle cutout use scene 1 again to repeat the loop and then again for scene 2. You will notice that these two areas and these two areas are the same which means that it's repeating properly. You don't have to order it in this stair like pattern but for me it reduced any artifacts. And that's it. For me I only used one scene repeating so it kind of looks a bit weird but if you use three different scenes it will work. You now can render it out as a PNG sequence or as an MP4 if you change it to FFmpeg and then H.264. The files for the tutorial project should be available in Gumroad. I've set up the project to be as easy as possible to use. All you have to do is put anything you want in the scene and click render and it should all work. Well then once you're done open the video project and it should all be in there right away. If you do end up making anything with the tutorial or the project files feel free to post it on the Blender subreddit. I'm really interested to see what pe other people would make. This is the first tutorial I have ever done and I hope it's actually useful and understandable because I watch CG Matter and Blender Guru and them and they make them really well and I'm not sure how this turned out and I hope it's understandable. And before I go I do want to shamelessly plug my main channel where I just mess around on games. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and all the links should be in the description. Thank you.